We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros. Brett, where can they find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. Over the weekend, we got some great news about Frommer Valdez. He's not going to miss the season, apparently. And we've got some uh, interesting reports from uh, what's going on. Brandon Belak. it looks like he could be uh, pushing for the open day roster. And there's some other reports about what's going on with Andre Scrubs' shoulder. Uh, is uh, he could be a scrub for the open day roster? So much more to talk about on this Locked On Astros podcast. Don't forget, you can get Locked On Astros on podcasting app Himalaya, as well as Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. When getting car, tell you Spotify to play podcasts, Locked On Astros. And today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Go to builtbar.com and use the promo code Locked On15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. So, Brett, let's go and get started with Frommer Valdez. That was the big news over the weekend. And I know that kind of uh, we talked about this with Brandon on the uh, the Locker Room podcast. And I know that audio got lost. But basically, Brandon said that he's, he's expecting to hear some great news. And Dusty Baker said, yeah, he's healing like the predator. He's got some good blood. He's a different cat, man. He, he said he's going through a lot of prayer. His mom has been praying for him. And half of healing is believing. I'm convinced of that from my past experience. He's doing What he's doing is a sh- nothing short of a miracle. So basically what Frommer Valdez is doing is he's defying what doctors said is possible. <laughs> he, is, he is a mutant. Like we didn't know that he was part of the X-Men. I think he's in one of their final... Um, episodes or maybe there's a reboot and he's going to star and take over um yeah so i i think it's funny how he describes it um it sounds like he's kind of <laughs> he talks sometimes like he's in the 70s still he's like he's a different cat i love that um and so they are basically so basically what they did was they got a second opinion on his fractured left ring finger from los angeles based hand specialist Dr. Stephen Shin, and he showed, he said Fromber showed significant healing, meaning that Valdez will not require surgery, like you said. Um, he won't be out for the whole season, but there is still no timetable for his return. Regardless, I think it's great. Um, be, and since he has been gone, he has to quarantine um, upon his return to Florida Um, since he took a commercial flight but that is great news Eric and I guess if people are playing fantasy baseball that means they give a green light to to uh, draft Framber Valdez right yeah I just drafted him in the 17th round and if if this was a real draft he would be drafted maybe in the 10th round or something like that but I unfortunately have to wait till he gets put on the aisle but that's not a big deal but this is a uh, this is pretty big news for Astros fans and the Astros are still going with the idea that they did not sign him just be, they did not go out and sign Jake Odorizzi because of Frommer Valdez. They were out, already kind of going out there and doing it. So uh, Zach Greinke went out today and he pitched four innings. He allowed five hits, two, two runs, one earned. He had one walk, only struck out one batter. He threw six, eight pitches and 44 strikes. And you have to love what he said after the game. And when they said, are you still excited about starting opening day? He's like, oh, I never cared about it. I still don't care about it. I guess it gives you a better uh, chance of making more starts during the season. That's the main positive about it. You got a better chance of making 32, 33, 34, 35 starts. (laughs) So what do you have to say about his slider? (laughs) Uh, So let me hold on. Let me let me just add on. Compare that with the tenacity that Lance McCullers said on, on our podcast when we asked him, who would you give the ball to? He's like, I would give it to me. Like, he's gung-ho about it. Um, I, you know, two polar opposites. And he said the slider hasn't really been, ha- hasn't been really good the last couple of years, especially last year. It feels good, but the results aren't good. I got a, I got a good moving one right now, but I can't control it. <laughs> if I could control it, it would be great. I threw way too many, not even close ones to where I wanted to throw them. It's not a good pitch. 
if I can't command it? Wow. Okay, let's unpack that. So basically what he's saying is he's got good stuff, but it's not good, but he can throw them well, but he can't control it. But he's got a lot of different ones that aren't even close. So who knows? <laughs> the, the good thing he's got going for him is he doesn't throw 98 miles an hour, right? If right. he's throwing this out of control, players can dodge it. I mean, he's not going to hit a whole lot of batters. Um, so here's the thing. Opponents had a 308 batting average on Grinky's slider in 2019 um, and 298 last year. Um, he threw it 16% of the time. Um, do you think, Eric, though, that despite all this, what he's saying, that because he has a more regular start, because he's in more of his routine, that he'll start off better? Do you think he'll finally get an opening day win? Isn't he 0-5 or 0-4 in opening day starts? Uh, like so an, something like, like an, that, but the Astros like an have a, ERA. Yeah, but the Astros have a pretty good track record in winning That's opening true. day since uh, uh, 2013. I believe they're on, what, a eight-game? Uh, eight, they are. Yeah, eight-season winning streak, so... I think the Astros karma would uh, kind of negate that. So speaking of which, there was a little scare over the weekend. Uh, I was watching, I believe it was Saturday's game or Friday. I think it was Saturday's game. And Andre Scrub uh, kind of started throwing a little bit. He lost some velocity and uh, Malonado kind of called out the uh, coaching staff and he left the game. And apparently it was a uh, uh, sore shoulders, try to say that. But uh, they did some tests on it, and they said that there was no structural damage, and it was just uh, some, what do they call it, a, a tendonitis or just something that's not anything long-term. It's just right. something that they're probably just going to, it's short-term, something that maybe rest will just heal. So I think the Astros maybe dodged a bullet there because if this was something that would required maybe surgery or some type of long-term shutdown, that could have uh, hurt them. But mm -hmm. uh, then we can also talk a little bit about Steve Ciszek looking like he's actually aiming to make the roster. I know he had that bad start to the, the spring <laughs> training, but he's looking like he's going to make the roster. And he had another good start uh, appearance the other day. But uh, Ciszek, he, he looks like he's going to earn that $2.25 million. Yeah, you know, with... Um... With Martin Maldonado picking this up, um, you, you saw um, Scrub, that it says he started at 96. He went all the way down to 86. And as a catcher, right. now, I mean, I haven't caught major league pitchers, but you can tell when your pitcher's throwing to you and he significantly gets slower or something's not right. It's great to have him back there. You know, c -Sheck, I, I really hope that he um, that he delivers dividends for this team because I think 2021, he could be really valuable. I think you can bet on that. And speaking of betting, let's go ahead and talk about betonline.ag. That's right. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Now, I'm not even going to talk about football because right now we're right in the middle of March Madness. Like you could go bet for the upsets. You could go bet for guys like Oral Roberts University who had another upset today who upset Florida and they just keep rolling through. U of H won by three points. Congratulations, Cougars. You can go bet on them. Bet online has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds. It's the best way to place your bets and it's free to sign up. Head to the website to use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Use a promo code locked on. And speaking of being locked on, why don't you go check out the Locked On Today podcast? I know that you listen to us for all the Astros news, but get all the sports news you need in under 20 minutes with the Locked On Today podcast hosted by Peter Bukowski. He updates you with all the latest news in every major sport with the help of our, of our local experts. Follow the Locked On Today podcast wherever you get your podcasts. So let's go and move on with some more Astros talk. And I think uh, some of the other local news is that we need to talk about is, let me scroll up here, is Brandon Belak. I know this is a guy that uh, you've been kind of following along with, but he's making the most of it. That's what Dusty Baker had to say with, about him. He said last year he would run out of gas and after about four and two thirds innings. But this year he feels like he has a lot left. He, he feels like he has well conditioned himself during the off season. He's trained for him. And he wants to make the club, and he's positioned himself in a pretty good way, way, but we still got a long way to go. 
And with a lot of the, with Jake Odorizzi and a few other people not really ready to be full-time yet, uh, I think that Brandon Bielak, at least to start the season, has really uh, put out a good audition to make the club. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Um, I remember back to, I just harken back to 2019 when I interviewed him when he was at Round Rock, and I was really impressed with his makeup. I was really impressed with his attention to detail, his work ethic. Um, he had talked about getting to interact with um, Craig Biggio. Um, I believe he played, with, I can't remember if it was Connor or Kevin Biggio, but he played with, with, with one of his kids. And um, he talked about how Craig talked to him about working hard and, and grinding. And, and, you know, he just does that. Um, he also said this, he said, I think I was a little juiced up there getting the start the first day of spring training. He said, I've calmed down, you know, my nervous, my nerves. And I've, I've talked to a lot of other guys on the team to understand what I'm here to do and what I need to focus on in spring training. That's been the mindset I've had to pass you out into you. And I kind of talked off air about him a little bit. And I kind of, I, I, I've, I've made a bad comparison of him to Wade Miley. And I wasn't thinking about him um, getting gassed because he's such a young pitcher. You know, he doesn't have the major league experience. If you have a normal 2020 season, he probably doesn't come up that early and isn't asked to throw as much as he did last year. So that explains a lot. But what Belak has been focusing on is improving his slider. He threw 26 sliders, 37%. 28 forcing fastballs at 40% clip against the Cardinals. And last year, Belak threw nearly 50% fastballs at only 10.9% sliders. So he hopes that his slider becomes the better option against right-handers who had a 1.349 OPS against him in 2020, which is massive. St. Louis has seven right-handed hitters in its lineup. So Belak is doing the work. He's going to put the work in. I know some people have messaged me on Facebook. He makes me nervous, but he had six strikeouts, Eric. Um, and, he, you know, he looks good. And when he commands it, when he's calm, and you got Martin Maldonado and McCullers helping him out, I think he is a great candidate to um, fill in and get us some spot starts here at the beginning. Yeah, and uh, he's doing everything he could do. At this point, there is an opening technically. A lot of people are worried that Christian Javier may not be ready to go deep into uh, the rotation. So maybe this is a chance for him to shine to start the season. And then once all the big boys are ready, then maybe he'll uh, take a back seat. But this is his chance. And you've got to really take advantage of this when, once you're given an opportunity. But uh, speaking of which, uh, you know who's been given a chance to get back in the leadoff spot? Jose Altuve. I know that you can't look too much into this, but uh, this Saturday was the fifth time that Jose Altuve batted leadoff. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure if he did again today. I wasn't paying attention to today's lineup. I'm not sure if he even played, but that does not mean that Baker, Dusty Baker is going to make him the leadoff guy, but I kind of like it. I kind of, this kind of goes back to old school. I know AJ Hinch did this before he moved, uh, George Springer back to the leadoff spot, but this kind of, it makes sense. I mean, putting Carlos Cray there, it makes sense to have the energy there. I get what Sully was saying, and I get having the power at the beginning of the lineup, 8K a la what George Springer did, but having Jose Altuve return to his roots, what he's comfortable with, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, he's hit, three, you know, he's had, he has a 315 career average in the leadoff spot. Um, he actually did not. Um, I just looked it up. Chas McCormick actually let off. It looks like Altuve had the day off, giving him some probably much needed rest. Um, you know, we are, what, two weeks away from opening day, um, April 1st, April Fool's Day. Imagine that. Um, but, you know, Baker hasn't settled on Altuve. He is still looking at, um, you know, Straw. Um, he's also looking at, you know, Carlos Correa. And he just says this. He says, I I'm just hoping that it doesn't become some revolving thing. Like I said, it's not easy to replace George, but you want Altuve to get a certain comfort level. The team feels, and he feels that we have a better lineup with Altuve batting first, especially if he returns to the form, getting 200 something hits and stealing bases. So, um, you know, right now it's up in the air. I think Dusty Baker is going to go with Jose Altuve because he'll feel like he's the most seasoned veteran in that spot. And I don't think it's a bad choice. Yeah, I agree with that. So uh, I'm going to go with the random uh, shit 
uh, category right now, just because I want to go ahead and uh, save this uh, thing for the third segment. But uh, John Heyman has been tweeting about the Astros, and it's not a bad thing for once. But really? he says that Robel, Robel Garcia has been playing all over the field for the Houston Astros and has impressed so far in Astros camp and is in the mix to make the roster. I don't know who he's been talking to, but I don't, I'm not so sure on that. Well, and he has, dude, he has, he has looked good. I, I mean, so. But who is he going to take the place of? But how many times has Heyman been wrong? Dude, Heyman's been wrong. On, well, oh, yeah, by the way, he blocked me on, um, on Facebook because I called him out for, for trashing the Astros all the time. Just now? Wow. Right. Oh, no, no, <laughs> no. He, his, his soft butt blocked me a few weeks ago. All right. Also, Noldi Paredes' uh, velocity was a little down today. He was uh, averaging only 94.2 miles per hour on 14 fastballs. Martin Maldonado did not seem concerned. He said that Paredes was mostly working on his secondary, his secondary pitches. And Dusty Baker said that Ryan Presley has been doing work on the backfields. He is fine. He'll throw a B game on Tuesday. Not to worry. Nothing's wrong with them, but this is just something that uh, they're just trying to, they want to see some of the other pitchers. So uh, nothing to worry about, nothing to see here, fans. But speaking of things to see here, what's going on today in March Madness with Built Bar? Built Bar, well, so you will find out by, by Monday today, you will find out who the matchups are. Let me tell you who the matchups are going into this week. Mint Brownie versus Coconut Puff. This is the enticing eight, Eric. Caramel Brownie versus the winner of Coconut Brownie Chunk and Lemon Almond Cheesecake. And then on the other side of the bracket, the enticing eight, you have Cookies and Cream, which beat Churro Puff, which I think is madness, an upset there. Coconut Almond is going against Cookies and Cream this week. And then Cookie Dough Chunk will go against the winner of Birthday Cake and Coconut. If Birthday Cake doesn't pull out the win, they might as well call themselves North Carolina or... Um, who are the other teams that got upset today or this weekend? So here's the deal. I want you to go to BuiltBar.com. Why? Because Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar in the business. Go vote for this March Madness to, to vote who is the best Built Bar in the land. Remember to use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order. That's LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order at BuiltBar.com. I'm going to tell you I've tried the birthday cake. I've tried the churro puff. It's amazing. I've tried the raspberry cheesecake new flavors phenomenal get them because they don't last these new flavors they go fast you need to order like now like order yesterday all right go to builtbar.com best tasting protein bar in the business all righty speaking of the best in the business let's go and talk about belching beaver belching beaver was created in 2012 and like my hats if you can see the video i've got a, my belching beaver hat they were created to inspire damn good times. Not only are they in the Oceanside area in California, but they have branched out to Texas. They've teamed up with Ambient, their distributor, and they have one of my favorite drinks. I actually had it for the first time this weekend. It's the Miso Honey Blonde. It is phenomenal. It's an easy drinking blonde um, pale ale, and it is phenomenal. The mango, I haven't tried yet, but I'm looking forward to that. Um, the next round of games that comes up, for the Sweet 16, Belching Beaver has drinks for all palates. And if you are in the Oceanside area, go check them out. If you're in Texas, go to go to belchingbeaver.bev to find out where they serve Belching Beaver, where they have it in, their, in your stores, and you can pick it up. That's right. Get your headphones on, kick back, and have a cold one, and let's have a damn good time for, with Belching Beaver. All righty. Beginning this Wednesday, the Locked On MLB podcast is featuring one of our biggest events of the year, the Locked On MLB preview series. All of our local experts in every MLB market answers the biggest questions around every each team. Follow the Locked On MLB podcast on the radio.com app or wherever you get your podcast. So speaking of John Heyman, let's go ahead and look at something that he tweeted out earlier today. And I was like, say what? So this has nothing to do with the Astros, but I thought it was kind of appropriate to uh, a little deadline that Carlos Correa has set. So sources say that the Mets are willing to go to 300 million to lock up superstar shortstop Francisco Lindor, though it isn't clear if they are yet. They, are, they started below that number, but are looking to compromise to get it done. They're, they obviously are quite serious about keeping him in the fold. 
So we talked to Brandon and I know Brandon doesn't know everything, but he was giving us, he's good with those contract numbers. And he was saying 250 or I mean like 10 years, 25 million. Do you think that the, the Astros should go ahead and sign this before Lindor signs uh, with the Mets? I think so. I think it will be in the Astros' best interest if they want him long term to sign him before, because if Lindor sets the market at 300 million, now what Lindor has that Carlos Correa doesn't have is he doesn't have an injury history. Um, so you, I mean, that, that has to be exhibit A in the Astros case, but yes, you, you get him signed before April 1st, you do it now, you get it done because then you don't have to worry about other players setting you up to have to go higher just to appease him. Right. Don't, don't you think, do you, so Eric, do you think that if Lindor signed tomorrow, $300 million contract, do you think there's any way Carlos Correa touches a 250 million offer 50 million less than what Lindor got? I'm not sure. I mean, I just drafted Shohei Otani the batter just cause I'm like, Oh, Fred, it's my turn. But yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if the, what the Astros are going to do, but we do know that he has said that he wants to be signed by the Astros to do this before the April 1st deadline. Right. So I, we don't hear anything. And that's what literally they have 10 days, 10 days. Yeah. That's, that's getting scary. And does that mean he's a, he's not going to be signed by the Astros? No, that does not mean that, but it's, it's getting scary, dude. The chances go way down, Eric. Um, we all know that. Uh, I honestly think, though, if if you had me like say, okay, what's the percentage chance? I think there's still over a 50% chance that he signed with Houston because I still don't think other teams are going to give him what Houston's going to give him because of his injuries. We, we can't let that go by the wayside. And that is a big thing. He has not played. Has he? Has he played a full season without injury? uh one last season last year i mean i think well but that's 60 i mean i mean like a full 162 game season he has not played a full season with that i mean his rookie season was clearly his you know his rookie of the year campaign and you know he's been good in other years when he's healthy and that's the biggest problem i love carlos Cray in astros uniform i want him to be an astro for life um, I, I, I don't question the guy's toughness. I don't, I don't question whether the guy has it, he has it, but that has to be what the Astros are looking at long-term. But if you lose them, you can't expect your young guys to step in and take a spot because they're not going to be able to fill those shoes right away. Yeah, that's true. So that's something to kind of think of. So hopefully we hear something in the next few days. I know all the focus was on from Valdez, but from Valdez is healthy, so now the Astros can turn their attention to Carlos Cray and hopefully get something done. And so there's some also some other news today at the stadium. And this is Chandler Rome's <laughs> tweet. He says, "What a time to be alive!" A member of the ballpark security team at the Roger Dean Stadium wearing an official polo with security and big letters on the back just spent Alex Bregman's entire plate appearance banging trash can before every Bregman, every pitch Bregman struck out looking. So just imagine a paid security guy. Yeah, that'd be, <laughs> that, okay. That's great. Have fun. Um, I don't know. I guess I wish I was a security guard being, being paid to, you know, wait, do security guards even have like weapons? He's know. he's basically like a mall cop, right? Let Paul Blart have his fun in the sun. Who's making millions and who's going to have a chance to win an MVP and put the Astros in the World Series? Alex Bregman, not security cop, um, you know, Paul Blart. So that's fine. Paul Blart's going to do that. The fans are going to do that. It's going to be funny. People are going to entertain themselves. It's going to be cute. But in Houston, we really don't give two craps about that stuff. It's actually kind of funny, to be honest. Um, I thought about reacting to it. Um, I saw that you put stay classy. Um, <laughs> but it's just, you know. It, That's going to happen. It's going to happen all year, all year long. That's right. <laughs> and Sully, I think Sully told Astros fans, you better wear a helmet if you're not prepared to take on this season. Um, you know, because 
there's there's just a lot going on hey hey, Eric. hey i need yeah. you to make your friend have your friend uh make me a stay classy um something stay classy like something that we every time somebody makes some comment about the astros cheating i just have a stay oh, classy or i'll talk to I'll, I'll talk to big frog and katie and I will, I will i will get a shirt drawn up and i'll get one made for you and me okay we'll do that all right but i meant more like a little meme or something Oh, a me oh, oh, you mean, oh, you mean my guy, Corey at 411 yeah. to make a meme. Okay. Well, we'll make a meme and we'll make a shirt. Okay. Um, so, Hey, tell me about this, um, about this odd lineup or outfield experiment that Dusty Baker had with the um, Cardinals. Well, this is something that they're looking at. And I, we all know that this is something that I've debated talking about. And I think mentioned a few times on the podcast, but why not try putting, Kyle Tucker in center field. And I know a lot of people would be like, well, he's not the best center fielder, but you're going to have to have Sousa Jr. in the outfield sometimes. You're going to have to have Led Ms. Diaz in the center field sometimes. So you're going to have to have like the kind of alternate uh, lineups out there. So that's what Dusty Baker is doing. He's trying to do it now in spring training. And so that's all this is. He's just trying to have different scenarios. And so don't look too much into this, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see Kyle Tucker play some games in center field. And he's, uh, we saw Lance Berkman play some games in center field. I mean, if he can do it, Kyle Tucker. The famous, <laughs> the famous when he uh, climbed up Towels Hill and caught the ball over his shoulder basket catch and fell and held up the ball. That was probably one of the greatest Towels Hill moments ever, right? Yeah, so if he can do it, I'm pretty sure that Kyle Tucker can do it. But that's all we got for this episode of the Locked On Astros podcast. And don't forget to check back every day for more Astros talk. Go Astros. And opening day is 10 days away. Stay classy, Houston. Hey, that was a good show, man. <laughs>